Hello from the Go team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write applications using VS Code. If you want to follow along, you're going to need a couple of things. First, you're going to need Go itself. The easiest way to get that is to go to golang.org, click on Documents, and then click on Installing Go. This will show you the right instructions for your operating system. The second thing you'll need is VS Code. For that, go to code.visualstudio.com and just click this link here. Again, it will show you the right instructions for your operating system. In this video, I'm going to be following along roughly with the how to write Go code document that you can find at golang.org slash doc slash code.html. I'm going to briefly explain the concepts I'm using, but if I'm going too fast or if I don't just explain something, you can always look here for a little more information. All right, so with that done, Let's take a look at Visual Studio Code. Once you're in VS Code, you'll need to open a folder. I've opened the Go Demo 1 folder over here. And then you'll need to install the Go extension. To do that, click on the extension button on the left, search for Go, and click the Install button. It'll change to installing for a moment. And then once you've done that, it's ready to go. The next thing we need to do is create a module. In Go, modules are the unit of distribution and versioning of software. We can create a module at the terminal by running go mod init and then the name of the module we're creating. Typically, you want the name of the module to be the location on the internet where you would download that module. Since I don't really have a website myself, I'm going to use example.com slash go dash demo dash one. You could use your, your GitHub account or whatever makes you comfortable. That creates a go.mod file here. And you can see that it's not very complicated, mostly just what I typed to the command line. Next, we'll create a go package. A go package is a folder that contains go code. I'm going to call mine mascot. And then I'm going to create a file in it, mascot.go. This is going to trigger the go extension to start up. And when it does, it's going to find that it's missing some tools. So click on this Analysis Tools Missing button on the bottom right and click Install. That'll work for a while, maybe faster or slower, depending on your computer. And once it's done, you're ready to start writing. So the first thing in any Go file is the package declaration. So I'll start writing that. And you can see that VS Code has already inferred the package name from the directory name and is proposing auto-completions. So I'm just going to take that. And then I'll write a little function that returns string, representing the best mascot in the entire open source world. And I'll save that file. And I've got a little yellow underline here saying I'm, I should write a comment, so I might as well do that. And I'll save that. I'll close this down here so it's not distracting. Now let's write a little main function so that we can see how our code works. I'll call that main.go and I'll put it at the top level of the module. And again, I need a package declaration. And VS Code suggests it for me, so I'll take that suggestion. And then I'll write a function, main, which is the entry point of our program. And I'm going to have it print out the best mascot. Now, to do that, I'm going to use the format package. And typically, if you're writing code by hand, you would have to add an import statement for the format package. But Visual Studio can do that for us. So if I type fmt dot, I get auto completions. And you can see on the right of the auto completion that it's from the format package. And what that is, is that's VS Code telling us that it's going to add the import fmt if I accept this. So I will type the rest of the function that I'm after, pick it from the menu, hit enter. And you can see that the top of my file now has import fmt. And in this example, that's not all that helpful, but for a more complicated package name, that would be pretty useful. And similarly, I can get autocomplete suggestions for my mascot package. All right, so I've saved everything, and now I'm ready to run it. So let's go to the terminal again, and let's do go run main.go. And you can see that it prints out the mascot as I expected. Great. As a next step, just for demonstration purposes, 
let's show you what it looks like to require a package from the internet. So one package that you might use to make your command line uh, mascot more exciting is to print out a quote. And that's what we can do with the quote package. I've already downloaded this on this computer. So VS Code you, knows that it exists even though I don't depend on it yet. So I'm gonna have it print out a pithy go quote and I'm going to hit save. Now you'll note that there's a red underline under this package and that's because we haven't actually depended on it yet. It's on my computer, but unless we declare the dependency, we can't use it. Fortunately, VS Code has a quick fix for this. If we click on the quick fix, it says add rsc.io slash quote to your go.mod file. And that's what I want to do. So I'm going to click it, hit save. And now we can see, whoops, now we can see that the error has gone away. Oh, looks like I forgot my parentheses, no problem. Okay, so let's run it again and see how it goes. So now we've got, with just a few clicks, we've downloaded a module from the internet and we're using it. Writing tests is an important part of developing high quality software. So just for kicks, let's write a little test. And we do that by putting underscore test at the end of the file name, declaring it as a test pa package up here, and then writing a test function. Note that when I saved, I got a testing import automatically. So what I want to test here is that we got the name of the best mascot in the world correct. So I'm going to call my mascot function and I'm going to make sure that it equals the go gopher. If it doesn't, I'm going to fail the test. You should of course write better test messages than this, but I'm going to be a little lazy. Wrong function. Okay. VS Code, you'll note, has discovered that this file is a test file, and as such, it's put little buttons above each test that let us run it, or if you wanted to, debug it. Uh, debugging is a little too complicated to cover here, but basically you just click debug and then you set breakpoints. For now, I'm just going to run it. And when I do that, we can see that, in fact, the test has failed, and that's because my best mascot function isn't returning the best mascot. I can use go to definition to jump quickly to that function so that I can fix it. And of course, somebody foolishly thought that Tux was the best mascot, but actually it's the Go Gopher. So let's fix that and save it. Now we can go back to the test file, hit run test again, and our test succeeds. All right, so that was a pretty quick tour through the features in VS Code. I hope it was helpful. Again, if you're not sure about some concept I mentioned, you can go to the how to write Go code document and read through it. It's a little different, but it covers most of the same material in a little more detail, and you can read it at whatever pace you find comfortable. All right, happy coding.